Well, things are not easy as you think because sometimes you want to have an inquiry on your credit card, on your Navy Fed credit card, and things seem very complicated. So the big question is why? Why is it complicated? So in today's conversation, I want to talk to you about Navy Fed credit limit increase hacks you must start using now to get massive limit increase every three to six months. So the the time frame we are looking at is three to six months, okay? So I want you to stick around to hear more about the NFCU limit increase hacks that you must start using now. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to address an issue that's very important. A lot of folks are trying to uh, increase their Navy Fed credit card and the limit on their credit card. And uh, they, it's, it's just very frustrating. They try everything. They work on the credit score. They actually try to contact Navy Fed. And the thing here is that sometimes they give them a very a small uh, limit increase, but people want like 5,000, 10,000. So in today's conversation, I want to ex explain everything. Okay. So first, here are the steps I want you to do. So first thing first, if you are trying to get a limit increase on your Navy Fed credit cards, let's say every three to six months, the first thing you got to think about is, is your needs. It's very important because you have to understand, do you have the right card? That's the question I want, I, want, I want you to think about. So evaluate your needs and know the type of card you need. Very important because if you, if you find yourself in a situation where you are using the wrong card, you, Navy Fed is not going to have enough activity on your card to judge your financial responsibility. In other words, your payment and your repayment. You're charging, charging transactions on the card and your ability to repay the, 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 the charges. So it's very important to actually make sure you have the right you, the right card okay so you want to compare actual versus planned spending you want to think about your, your financial goals you want to think about what kind of charges you have on the card are you buying more groceries are you in, into travel and, and entertainment are you uh, are you into uh, i mean what kind of charges are you practically having on the card are you using the card for uh, to pay bills all kinds of bills okay so think about how you will use the card very important Okay, that this is something you need to do. A lot of people don't think about that. So when we talk about credit cards from Navy Fed, are we talking about rewards credit card versus cashback credit card versus balance transfer credit cards? So this is one thing I want you to clarify. You need to elucidate that to be clear in your mind about, hey, listen, if I want to have a limit increase every three to six months, am I using the right card? In other words, does the card fit my spending patterns? Okay, so always take your time to shop around for the best Navy Fed credit card before you make a decision. Very important, okay? So big decision time, big decision time. The first thing I want you to do, I want the card that you currently have, the card you currently have right now in your wallet, does the card fit your spending pattern? Don't, for, don't that, just analyze, you know, you wanna look for the last, the last 90 days or six months and just see if the card fits your spending pattern. Very important. So the second thing I want you to do here is that if the card doesn't fit your spending patterns, then you need to actually switch cards. That's what we talk about card selection. You want to select the card that fits your needs. You know, a lot of people carry cards because they, they actually uh, hopped on on, a, on an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to seize a 0% APR for a balance transfer offer. Or sometimes they get, they get pre-qualified for a credit card and they just end up with the, with the quote-unquote the wrong credit card. So if, if there is a mismatch, if there is a dichotomy between the card that you have and your spending pattern, this could be a problem. So let's just quickly review Navy Fed credit cards, okay? Let's have a clear idea of what we're talking about. So when you we are speaking about Navy Fed credit cards, remember, if you are looking for a cashback credit card, you are you definitely want to go for the cash rewards credit card, okay? Because this card allows you to earn up to 1.75% cashback on all purchases. And you can redeem as soon as you earn. So this is pretty good with this card. So the card is great for getting cash back, everyday spending, and average to excellent credit. And the APR is kind of decent too. You're looking at 11, 15% to 18%. If you are looking for a low rate card, you want to go for the platinum. 
Platinum is kind of cool. It has no annual fee also. The, 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 the APR here oscillates from 7.49% to 18%. This is really good. So this card is great for it. Large purchases paid over time, low interest rate, and again, the FICO score average to excellent. If you are looking for a travel rewards, and not travel, just a rewards credit card, you want to go for a the Go Rewards card, okay? So this card allows you to earn more when you are on the go. So you get 3x points at restaurants, 2x points on gas, and 1x points on everything else. Okay, and the APR here oscillates from 10.49% to 18%. So this card is great for if you have a busy lifestyle, if you have a family, if you love dining, if you love dining out, if you have average to excellent credit, this card is great for you. Now here is another card that is great for you if you love traveling. So you have uh, the Navy Fed Visa Signature Flagship Rewards. With this card, you earn 3x points for every dollar you spend on travel and 2x points on everything else, okay? Now this card does carry an annual fee and it is uh, $49. But again, it's great if you, this card is great if you want to maximize your rewards, if you love traveling and you have very good to excellent credit. And the last card I want to talk to you about is uh, the, uh, the Navy Fed More Rewards American Express. The card is great if you want to maximize your everyday spending with 3x points at supermarkets, 3x points on gas and transit, 3x points at restaurants, and 1x points on everything else. So the card is great for everyday spending, grocery shopping, and average to excellent credit. So credit card, credit card, credit card. Boss, well, one thing I want you to do here is you need to think about the best credit card for you. If you're trying to increase your limit every three to six months, you need to have the right credit card so that Again, Navy Fed can see activity. They can see activity on the card and they can also see your ability to repay whatever you charge on the card in the first place. This will constitute, this will build a payment history that will later on be conducive, be favorable to your limit, to your limit uh, request, to your increase, you know, to your limit increase request. Let me talk to you now about the, the requirements. If you are trying to increase your limit every three to six months, it is really important to understand the requirements of the specific card you want or have. Very important. Okay, so when we talk about credit card eligibility, re eligibility requirements with uh, Navy Fed, usually they are standard. So they want you to be at least 18 years of age. Okay, they want you to report sufficient income to show that you can repay the, the card issuer. So for instance, with, with Navy Fed, the minimum is, is 18,000. We have seen people get approved for a credit card with $15,000, even $12,000 gross income on a yearly basis, okay? They want you to be, uh, to have a resident, uh, I mean, to be resident or a citizen, and your credit score, again, should be around 600. And when when we talk about it, we talk about information needed to submit your application, they want you to have your full name, date of birth, social security number, and, and country of citizenship. Now, very important, the financial information is very important. This is what a lot of people get, you know, they just get confused, they get frustrated. Now, Navy Fed just wants you to have, they want you to indicate your employment status. And this is very important, even after you have, after you have the card, you still need to update whatever happens in your employment status, okay? So we're talking about if you're employed, if you're self-employed, if you're in the military, if you're retired, if you're unemployed, you just need to mention that. Be truthful though, okay? They want to know more about your total annual income. So this is, this is again, this is something that you need when you apply for the card in the first place. But after you got the card, you need to update your information. So we are talking about updating your salary, your wages, your retirement income, your investments, your rental properties, your, uh, your alimony and child support. When we talk about non-taxable annual income, we are speaking about income that is uh, exempt from, from uh, federal taxes, okay, federal income taxes. So we are speaking about what? We are speaking about Social Security public assistance, disability, and workers' compensation. They want you to mention also your monthly housing cost, your bank account information. So those are things you want to think about. So money, 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 money. Do you actually understand the requirements of the specific car that you want or the specific car that you have? Okay, you need to understand that you, the more the more you understand, the better the the the, um, the greater your chances of having the request limit that you need. Very important. Number four, we want to talk about direct deposit. Now, you you probably will be telling me, you know, there is no uh, linkage, there is no correlation between direct deposit and your ability to clinch a credit limit increase from Navy Fed every three to six months. And my answer to you is wrong, wrong. There is a strong correlation. 
there was a positive correlation between your direct deposit and uh, your ability to get that. Now we all we all understand the Navy Fed loves seeing cash inflows from their members. They love to see that you are financially responsible, that you are financially stable. Very important, okay? And uh, the thing here is that there is a uh, something called the Navy Fed internal score that takes that into account. They take into account whatever cash inflows you have with Navy Fed, okay? And uh, the thing here is that uh, I mean, direct deposit in general is convenient. It saves you valuable time, right? It is more secure than paper checks, if you really think about it, right? And uh, it offers a better and more convenient way to budget, really, because you get your cash really, really fast, okay? And the thing here is that it also keeps your money safe and protected, because if you really think about it, okay? And But one thing I want to say clearly is that there is a strong correlation in terms of uh, your ability to get your credit limit increase because you are showing every fed that you are making money, that first of all, you are employed because they see the source of the wire transfers, okay? So you're telling them, hey, listen, I have a job. I have a full-time job. I have, I have a part-time job. I have a seasonal job. They're seeing the cash anyway. It doesn't matter what kind of job you have right now. And that's the first thing. The second thing is that they see that uh, you are paid every two weeks or you are paid every week. So the frequency of pay is really important for us. It's very important for Navy Fed in terms of judging your financial your financial stability. Okay, and the third thing here is that they also see they also see how much you're making, which is the income information. So those are really important. So when you think about this, what we call the the magic the trifecta, you know the trifecta of a direct deposit, that really puts you in a good category in terms of uh, asking for the credit limit increase you want. The thing here is that once you, once you ask them, if you ask the limit increase and you tell them, hey, listen, I'm making more money, you don't have to prove anything anymore because they see the cash. I mean, assuming that you actually have allocated 100% of your income to uh, to your Navy Fed account in terms of direct deposit. But overall, this is what it is. So you want to set the red deposit real fast. So they, this will actually put you on, on a good path when it comes to uh, asking for a credit limit increase. They will approve you. I want to talk to you about your relationship about Navy Fed. Talk to me about that. What is the status of your relationship? What is uh, what, are you? Do you have a transactional banking relationship, or do you have uh, a real banking relationship? See, the thing here is that if you are, if you want to actually always be approved for a Navy Fed credit limit increase every three to six months, you need to switch from traditional banking, what we call uh, transactional banking, okay, to an all-in-one banking. In other words, you are building a real relationship. You are using Navy Fed as your number one or number two but you want to have a, you know an institution that helps you that accompanies you throughout series of steps in life okay because right now you probably have just what we call transactional banking so you have a checking account you you charge stuff on the card on your debit card on your credit card you pay it off and that's it transactional but transactional is, is very short term okay if you are trying to get a, a high limits on your credit cards on your whatever credit cards you carry for from navy fed you need to switch to an all-in-one banking i'm talking about having uh, been a situation where you are having more than one checking account or you can have one checking account that's fine but you want to have also savings account you want to have certificates you want to open certificates okay now i'm not saying that you have to put all your cash with navy fed i never said that What's important here is that if you want to choose them as your primary institution, then you have to make a decision and say, listen, how much of my cash am I parking with uh, this institution? Okay. And, uh, and when you think about that, you want to probably open also a money market account. Now, everything I'm telling you doesn't happen overnight. This, what I'm telling you doesn't happen overnight. This is the, the work of, uh, a work of uh, several months or several years. Okay. And uh, you want to think about your retirement savings, your IRAs your individual retirement accounts, your education savings. What about your kids? You have a college fund for your kids, okay? So those are conversations you need to have. And again, those are long-term, you know, uh, conversations of a uh, pivotal nature. You don't, you, you just don't wake up and just make a decision. And also you might want to consider the Navy Federal Investment Services. They have a, a wealth management unit that actually helps you move on to the next level of your life, which is wealth planning, okay? Savings, re retirement making sure you have wealth management. So money, 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 boss. What is your relationship with Navy Fed right now? Do you have transactional banking or do you have an all-in-one banking? Talk to me about that. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweaty Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation about Navy Fed credit card hacks that get you big limit increases anytime you ask. And we're talking about having your limit increased every three to six months. Okay, so that's the goal here. So the next thing you want to think about, you want to attack your FICO score. And I'm talking about really attacking it. In other words, you have to be active on your FICO score. A lot of people, unfortunately, they look at their FICO score with a passive with the passive pattern, with the passive lifestyle. They think of it, okay, it's there, it'll probably go off every now and then, and if I do the right thing. But one thing I wanna, what, what I want to introduce to you today is to have an active stance on your FICO score. You gotta actually, you know, quote unquote, attack this, uh, this metric and say, you know what? I'm gonna make sure that my FICO score goes up every month. It takes about 30 minutes every month. It takes about 15 minutes. But the whole thing is the, is the mindset. The mindset to say, listen, I want I want to check my credit score for errors, because I know if I have a high the higher my the higher my FICO score, the the better my odds of approval on the Navy Fed credit card limit increase request. Okay, so I'm I'm checking my credit reports for errors. I'm making sure that I'm paying down any credit card debt that I have that I may have. You know, sometimes you have debt that you forget. You know, maybe let's say you move from one place to another, and the last thing you know, your mail is not forwarded. And so you so you lose mail and you forgot that you probably owe another thousand dollars on your Discover credit card. So you have those things, you know, bothering you that are crippling your Navy, your um, your uh, inter- your FICO score. OK, so you basically want to get also, uh, let's say sometimes you 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 don't have the right credit card. So you want to have the, the right credit card again to make sure that you are bumping up your credit score all the time. OK, and, you know, you can also consider signing sign up for a a free monitoring service, a free FACO score monitoring service, such as Experian Boost, for example. Okay. And sometimes it's also important to, to say that, hey, listen, I want to actually be very strategic in when I apply for new credit. Okay. Because again, if you are looking for a credit limit increase in your, on your Navy Fed account, credit card, then why are, you, why are you applying for new credit cards anyway? So that's why we talk about being strategic in the plan for new credit cards. You want to apply for new credit cards sparingly. But the last thing you want to do all the time is to pay your bills on time. Every time, boss. Every time. The last thing I want you to think about if you are trying to get credit limit increases every three to six months is actually work actively on your DTI and CUR. So your credit utilization ratio and your debt to income ratio, those two elements should actually go down. You got to be in a systematic and reflexive way. You got to have a strategy where you are constantly, constantly reducing those metrics. Okay. And again, I go back to what I said earlier about having an active stance. The thing is a lot of folks, the majority of y'all, you're thinking of uh, DTI, my debt to income ratio and my CUR, my credit utilization ratio. You're thinking of those metrics after the fact. In other words, you were just you just uh, spend money and you just realize, okay, what is my DTI today? What is my DTI one week from now? What was my DTI three weeks from now? But what I'm trying to tell you is to think of your DTI and CUR before you spend. See, the thing is, if you are in a situation where you are thinking about, hey, listen, I, I want to reduce my DTI to maybe uh, one digit, let's say less than 10%, and I, do, I want to do the same thing for my CUR, my credit utilization ratio, then you start thinking differently because you are going to pay of let's say uh, your purchases the same day in other words you charge the stuff on the card and you pay and you repay it maybe uh, two days from two days later or, th- or one week later but you pay it off okay and you can make multiple payments in the same month because those are little things that actually uh, increase your FACO score because uh, it shows that you have positive payment history okay and you can ask for a credit limit increase you can ask your credit card issuer you can ask Navy Fed and uh, you can use more than one credit card because we are speaking about diversity of cards, right? So if, if you have the more revolving lines of credit you have, the more revolving credit products you have, the better. So you can have two or three credit cards. You can have one revolving line of credit. You can have one loan. You can, So it's all about diversity because, yes, you, as you probably know, diverse, credit diversity accounts for 10% of your FICO score. Okay. So when we talk about keeping your, your DTI and CUR low, we are also talk, talking about keeping your account open. This is really important. So those things will help you in the aggregate overall. Improve your chances of getting the credit the credit card limit increase you need and deserve every three to six months. 
especially if you do it actually while uh, staying in close contact with Navy Fed. As I said before, it's all about an all-in-one banking relationship. It's not about transactional banking. Okay, it's not about transactional banking. It is about relationship banking. Very important. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was talking to you about Navy Fed credit card limit increase hacks. You need to know if you want to increase your uh, your score, your your limit. If you want to increase your limits, your credit card limits every three to six months. So I spoke about your needs, your card selection, the requirements, direct deposit, your NPR, your relationship with uh, Navy Fed, your FICO score, and your DTI and CUR. Thank you so much for your attention. God bless you. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.